there were inconsistencies and illegalities that were happened. I do not believe laws were followed. I'll keep pointing back to the mail-in ballot. If you don't think we're complying with the law, then sue. But we have won every single court case because we follow the law. And welcome back to Square Off. That was a slice of the Republican primary debate last week for Maricopa County Recorder. State Representative Justin Heap, who went first, said laws were broken in our recent elections. Self-described data guy Don Hyatt declared the last two elections were stolen. Incumbent recorder Stephen Richard said, fine, sue us, but we've won every lawsuit. This Republican primary for County Recorder is the most important election on the primary ballot being mailed to voters this week. It's being watched nationally. Whoever wins the general election will play a central role in how future elections are run in our swing county. So is a defiant Stephen Richer in danger of being thrown overboard by a Republican base that buys the falsehoods about stolen elections. Joining us to discuss that primary election and the other primaries on the ballot are Stacey Pearson, co-founder of the Democratic consulting, consulting firm Lumen Strategies, and Tyler Montague, a longtime Republican activist. Welcome back to Square Off. Thank you. But we have to start with the debates between Joe Biden and Donald Trump. I'll let you just, Tyler, your reaction. It was a disaster for Biden. Uh, you know, Trump was Trump. I, I think people are inoculated against some of the outrageous things that he says. They just expect it. He's lost the power to shock people. And Biden, uh, it wasn't anything he said. It was the principal question in people's mind is, is he up to the job? And I think he looked like he's not. He looked like he has some severe cognitive decline and that he's just not capable for it and uh, you know people who are swing voters are starting to think does that mean i'm voting for kamala harris they don't like her stacy pearson you're the democrat i am what do you see I, and what and what what do you think should happen next i can't believe that the former president can take the stage and call our country a third world country or talk about us being a embarrassment to the world and this not be what we're talking about. Joe Biden's age is not a surprise. Having the former president of the United States say things like that, things I would ground my daughter for having said about the United States, should be disqualifying. Surely you couldn't look at that video and say, that's a president who's in control regarding Joe Biden. Oh, it, his age is a, obviously an issue, but he at least, at least regardless of his age or his cognitive stability, wants to live in the United States we have today. There, Trump's comments about our country when the world is watching and what he says about our military not being ready should be disqualifying. Well, there, we could spill many more words on this, but yeah. we're going to have to <laughs> stop there. Let's get to uh, Stephen Richard. So uh, after, uh, in the gaggle afterward, I want to give you one more critical piece of information ad adding to what Stephen Richard has said. Uh, he was asked, who would he vote for for president? This was before the debate. Let's take a listen. I, I voted for President Trump in 2020. And who am I voting, planning on? Yeah. Voting for in the uh, President Biden. For Biden? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. Stephen Richard voted for Donald Trump in 2020. He plans to vote for Joe Biden in 2024. So he pushes back on the election lies that are now at the core of the Republican Party. Now it defines the party. He rejects his party's presidential candidate in favor of the Democratic president. Tyler, how does Stephen Richard survive a Republican primary? It's a tough situation because the majority of Republican primary voters believe in the election fraud conspiracies. And so uh, what might save him is that the vote is going to be split between Hyatt and Heap. And Hyatt's the only one that's out there saying, yeah, I believe it was stolen. And I'm, you know, I'm your guy. I'm going to go do something about it. Heap seems to know that it wasn't, but has the backing of all the people that say it was. He's got the backing of Kerry Lake and others. And so he tries to be cute and, and, and dance his way through it. So they may split and Richard can get the, the, uh, the win. He's a very competent recorder. I think that's his path. But that would be shocking. He defies the Republicans on elections and he's voting plans to vote for a Democrat for president. I'm not surprised he's voting for Biden. He was personally attacked by Donald Trump multiple times. Uh, how do you vote for somebody that does that? I wouldn't respect him if he did. 
what's at stake at this election? I, I, I outlined it, but no, in the your future own of mind. democracy in, in in Arizona and in America writ large is on the ballot. And looking at Stephen Richer, the advantage I think he has is voters still appreciate authenticity and they appreciate people calling the ball and Richer has done a phenomenal job doing that. And we'll, I think we will know by how many independents have pulled Republican ballots whether or not Richer is in good shape. So I think we'll know by next week, end of next week, by how many independents um, have had Republican ballots mailed to them. So he needs independents to... Yeah, I, they're voting again. for Richer. If he if this was a city council style election where everybody voted, Richer would win this running away. He just has a Republican primary voter problem. Okay, let's move on to uh, another piece of business from last week. Uh, Stephen Richer um, posted a video somebody sent him. He discovered in which uh, a woman named Shelby Bush, uh, who is the chair of the Republican delegation to the Republican National Convention in three weeks. She said she would lynch Richer if he had walked into the room at that time. But that's not all she said. Take a listen. Don Hyatt here. He's running for county recorder, right? He's a good Christian man, and he believes, he believes in what we believe in. But if Stephen Richer walked in this room, I would lynch him. I don't unify with people who don't believe in the principles we believe in and the American cause that founded this country. She would lynch Stephen Richer if he walked into that room and she referred numerous times to these good Christian men and Christian values. I would add Stephen Richer is Jewish. What is this telling us about the Republican Party? Because that's not just a one-off in that video. The crazies are in control. Okay, uh, Shelby Bush was at the heart of the election fraud conspiracies, promoting those. She ran, uh, I think it's called We the People. They got money from Overstock.com, uh, Patrick Byrne, et cetera. Mike Lindell. Mike Lindell. So she, th this crowd is, has been elevated. They've always been there, but now they have their hands on the steering wheel and they've driven the Republican Party into the ditch in Arizona. Is this kind of Christian nationalism getting enough attention? Oh, absolutely not. It, it, this, this is the most terrifying thing we're facing as Americans is this individualism, this Christian nationalism, this us against themism, this racism, this sexism, all of this. And, and we're, you know, history has a tendency to repeat itself and here we are again. And it's exactly why I am more confident today than even before the debate that the Democrats have a good chance in November. These lunatics are gonna continue to say nuts and nuttier and nuttier things. And it, ultimately there is a vast majority of Americans who just want these guys off the news. <laughs> they just wanna go back to sanity. All right, gotta end it there. When we come back, our primary season starts with two bizarre thefts from Maricopa County's Elections Department and the Arizona State Senate. What should we make of them? Stay with us.